Okay. A radical two, for example, is not a rational number. You cannot have an irrational number in a denominator. So if you have one, we have to get rid of it. Example, five over the square root of two. Can't have it in the denominator. This is called <laughs> rationalizing the denominator, making it rational. What can I multiply this by to make the radical sign go away? Radical two. Yeah. All right. So all we're doing is taking a fraction and multiplying it by one. That's allowed. That doesn't change the value of it. So, by the way, this if you're absent, this is 11.3 radicals, day two notes. It'll be posted. So, if we multiply radical two times radical two, we get two. That's simplest form. And you just can't have a radical denominator. Okay, so let's go through these and I'll give you all kinds of examples. Uh, number one is the square root of 288 over two. Now, it is the square root of 288 over the square root of two. But if we go ahead and divide that, what do we get? 144, which is a perfect square. You want to simplify first because you might not have to do anything else. All right, so, and this is a good review for your final because on your final without the radical, you have to simplify these. Okay, what happens if I simplify this? The number is nine X. Now what we did last week was the square root of three times the square root of three times the square root of x. Well, I'm sorry. Square root of nine, which is three radical x. You with me so far? Yes. Stop me when you're not. Okay, the square root of 11 over 81. Let's make it the square root of 11 over the square root of 81. We have a radical denominator, but it happens to be a perfect square. So we're good there. I <coughs> got markers. All right, number four. We can put the square root of C over the square root of A to the sixth. Perfect square. Square root of C over A to the third. We don't have a radical in the denominator, so we're good to go. What do you think I should do with number five? Divide. can do a couple of things here. The square root of four is two. Let's go that route first. The square root of 40 over two, and then that has a four in it. So that's four, 10 over two. Those cancel out, right? Could have just divided. Now here's another yes. Here's another way. You could have taken it and have been done with it. Either way, get the same answer. What? When you're dividing, when you have a second step there. Yeah, uh, that's two over two. One. Why can't you divide uh, both numbers? Because when you're dividing, you have to divide both numbers by two. Or no? Never. And that can't be divided by two anyway. That's not a ten, you know. 
That's three point something. Yeah. Okay. I see two perfect squares here. Whoops. Okay. I would do this. The square root of one over the square root of 225 x to the sixth. Perfect square, perfect square, perfect square. 1, 15, x cubed. Do what? Once you take the square root, there is no symbol. The operation is square root. Once you do it, it's gone. Square root of 81 is not the square root of 9, it's 9. Okay? What about 7? <laughs> so the square root of 48 over 7. And that's got a what in it? 16. So 4, square root of 3, sevenths. Ready for number 8? Looks to me like we can uh, simplify first. This was on your this is on your final because you did this. Okay, 33 over 27 can be divided by what? Three. Three. So that'd be eleven ninths. And what about the x's? X to the third. X to the third. Which is really the square root of eleven x to the third over the square root of nine. Looks to me like we have a perfect square in there. Square root of 11, square root of x squared, square root of x over three. Final answer, x square root of 11 x, gets complicated, doesn't it? Yep. Over three. Look at that for a minute, and make sure you understand it. All right, now we got a bunch of radical denominators. This is called rationalizing the denominator. Cannot have it, what should I multiply by? Square root of three over the square. It have to, you can only multiply by one. Otherwise, you're changing the value. So on top, square root of 30. And on the bottom, square root of 9, which is 3. Uh, a lot of kids will make a dumb mistake here and divide these and get square root of 10. You can't divide it. Can I keep going? What can you do with 30? Four doesn't work, nine doesn't work, 16 doesn't work, 25 doesn't work, 36 doesn't work. You're done. It's two and 15, but those aren't perfect squares. It's five and six, but those aren't perfect squares. You can't get anywhere. This one's a little complicated because you got perfect squares all over the place. I suggest you simplify first. But maybe you didn't think of that. How about times radical 8 over radical 8? I'll do it two ways. For those of you that would have thought to do this first, the reason I wouldn't do this first is because you're going to get big numbers. So on the bottom, you're going to get 8. 
and that on the top you're going to get 160. Then you can break that up into 16 times 10, which is 4. That's one half. Now, you do have a right, since they're both radicals, to reduce them first. What would um, this simplify as? Divide them both by two. Two and four. Right? And then you get that right away. Mm -hmm. Radical 10 mm -hmm. over two. See, you can divide both of these by two because they're both radicals. Yeah? Can you also do uh, two that's one and then square root of two? Yes. Yeah. Here's another one. Great question. You can also do this. Here's her question. You can break this one up into the square root of four times the square root of five, and this one is square root of four times the square root of two. Cancel those out. You have square root of 5 over the square root of 2, which can't have a denominator of a radical. So square root of 2, square root of 2, square root of 10, 2. There's a lot of ways you can go. As long as you do what's mathematically correct, you'll all get the same answer at the end. What? So there's no, like, PEMDAS for this? Or no, there's no PEMDAS. All right, how about number uh, 11? What do you think? Well, let's break it up into that first. Now we're going to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. On top, square root of 2. On the bottom, 2. Try number 12 yourself. Now, my suggestion is reduce your fraction first. What well, can you divide both of those by? 7. seven. seven. Oh. Go ahead and try and do it. We're on number 12. This is it, by the way. We're back to quadratics next time I see you. This is confusing. Sorry. That's logical to me. So that's the square root of six fifths, which is the square root of six over the square root of five to get rid of that, times the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. Square root of 30 over 5. That's what I got. Can you divide 30 by 5? That's not a 30. That's 5 point something. So no. You can only do it when they're both radicals. You got it. You got to remember this is not a 30, guys. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 36 is 6. So this is 5 point something. Can't divide. Sorry, this seems like a dumb question, but what's a radical? I forget. One of these. A square root. This is a radical sign. So then why can't we divide 30? Because you said if it's a radical, if that's a radical too. If they were both radicals, you could make it radical six. Oh. 
because this, forget about this, this would be the square root of 30 over 5, which is the square root of 6. But since there isn't a radical there, you can't do anything. This is 5 point something. 5 point something divided by 5 isn't 6. All right. Oh, we're getting complicated here. 22x squared y to the fifth. This is good review for the final. 6xy squared. Let's simplify first. Go ahead and simplify and then see if you can figure out what to do. This one's complicated. This one's crazy complicated. Are you done? Wow, this one's really a mess. Let me see it. Nope. What? Well, let's reduce it first. 11 thirds. X is gone. No. X is on the top. One on top. And there's Y to the third, right? Yeah. So that's what you have so far. Mm -hmm. yes. Now let's break it up into two separate radicals. Mm -hmm. You multiply by a radical. Radical three mm -hmm. over radical three. Mm -hmm. So we took care of the denominator situation. But we're not done. On top, we get 33x y to the third over 3. It's got a perfect square in it. So I'm going to break that up. y squared and y still have a 3. So we're just basically going to move that out of there. Yeah. 33xy. Did you get it? There, will, I won't make anything on your exam this is complicated. Oh, what's this doing? I'll give you one like 1 over radical 2. Or square root of 20. I promise. All right, try number 14 on your own. You guys remember the uh, quadratic formula? You're going to be using it soon. You forget it? That's a test there. It won't be on your final. You have to know it. It's been a while, okay? Do you know when you're going to use the quadratic formula? Next week? No. I mean, why would you ever use it? When you can't factor. Like your quiz today, you're factoring to get the answer, right? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes you can't factor. And you want to say prime, no solution? Quadratic formula gets you a solution. Usually. You'll see. All right. I'm going to put the 7 and the 2x. And I'm going to multiply by square root of 2x over the square root of 2x. gives 
me the square root of 14x. Done. Can I review how to find the zeros again? Yeah. All right, let's do uh, 15 together. Zero equals 49a squared minus 64. Now, on your quiz today, you would factor that. Isn't that the difference of two perfect squares? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on your quiz today, you would do 7a minus 8, 7a plus 8. All right? And then the O. Oh. 7a minus 8 equals 0. 7a plus 8 equals 0. Add 8. Add 8. 7a equals 8. Divide by 7. 8 sevenths. That's one of your answers. Minus 8, minus 8. 7a equals negative 8. And the short way to write that is plus or minus 8 sevenths. What? Uh, if it comes out to the same answer, I don't care. Yeah, you can, or you can write it twice. Now, I'm going to show you another way to solve that one. Because that's the only way you know how to solve it. Because our next lesson is called solving by square roots. All right, add 64. Add 64. 64 equals 49a squared. This is what you would be doing if it wasn't factorable, by the way. All right? Now, square root of them both. You get 8 equals 7a. And then divide both by 7. Well, it's plus or minus 7a, because negative times negative gives you this, and positive times positive gives you this. Divide by 8, divide by 8. Huh? Oh. Why don't you divide by 7? Yeah, I messed up. Huh? And then eight I hate messing up on video. Sorry, video. Let's talk about plus or minus. Eight, right? What about negative eight? Why not? Negative eight times negative eight is 64. I don't know why. All right, let's do the next one. Can't factor it, right? So there has to be another way. This, by the way, is the lesson coming up in two days. We'll talk about all this plus and minus stuff. Yeah. So on our test, when we're writing the, what's your test? On your quiz today? Yeah. So You're going to solve by factoring. When we answer, will you say x equals a number, or do we just write the number? You can just put x equals 5 and 3. That's fine with me. Or you can write it as an ordered pair if you want. My, my fear of people writing as an ordered pair is to get the x in the wrong spot. All right. Can't factor it. All the ones you're going to do on the quiz today, you can factor and get the answer. But when you can't factor, this is a lesson coming up. Obviously, this worksheet was after this lesson coming up. You would get that x squared is 12 square root 4 and 3 all right so let's break it up <coughs> plus or minus 
parabolas on both sides. It's plus or minus. Okay. All right, you wanted to review. It's take out 9B if you still have it. And on the bottom of 9B is what your quiz is on. Just the bottom part. Quiz is really easy, guys. 9B. Any questions on any of 7 through 16? Nine B seven through sixteen. I wrote my answers like this: x equals two, x equals negative three. I don't care how you write it. Okay, give me one. So number seven. Number seven. Number seven. All right, let's do seven. Give me a good review. 2x squared plus 12x minus 14 equals 0. Greatest common factor. 2x squared plus 6x minus 7. Factor. x minus 1x plus 7? Yeah. Okay, we got three factors equaling zero. Two can't equal zero. Why can't two equal zero? <laughs> Why can't two dollars equal no dollars? Why can't two cupcakes equal no cupcakes? Why can't two people equal no people? I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. How can two equal zero? Two. Yeah, really? <laughs> now we got zero equals negative two. Add two back, add two back. All right. <laughs> two equals zero. All right. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> X minus one equals zero. X plus seven equals zero. By the way, a lot of advanced kids knowing that they're so smart, they sometimes get these backwards. They'll put positive seven and negative one. Be careful. If you write it out, you won't make any dumb mistakes. There's your two answers. Why can't it? That's your equal two. That's a good one. Any other ones on the bottom you wanna go over? Number 13, you couldn't factor, so you said no solution. Well, once you learn the quadratic formula, you're going to find out sometimes there is a solution. It just has a radical in it. Yeah. Let's do 12. I thought 13, I factored out 2. And then you got nothing. Yeah. So there was no <laughs> solution. Oh, yeah. That's when you're going to throw in the quadratic formula. All right, we're gonna do number 12. And this is the last one. You guys need to be really careful on your final and anything you ever do with a six and a five involved because one times six and two times three both give you a five in some way. So watch your signs. When there's a five and a six involved, it's the most missed factoring question. But if you multiply it out real fast to make sure it's right, you're good. If we use one and six, will that work? Why not? It'll be a negative six. And that's what kids will do, and they won't foil it to see if it works. That's what you did, isn't it? Yeah, that's such a common error. Doesn't work. That's the only thing that works. At the very least, if you choose the wrong one, just at least do the last two digits and see if you get that right sign. 
Okay? That was a good one to bring up. Now I can turn the video off. You people that are absent have to take a quiz when you get back.